Hi, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you what is, in my opinion, the best way to brighten a really dark underexposed shot in Photoshop. So this is the kind of thing that you want to do right at the start before you do any other kind of processing really. And um, yeah, there are other ways to brighten your image in Photoshop during the natural course of your workflow. Um, however, you know, if you're starting off with a really, really dark underexposed shot, it's good to, you know, get this done at the start uh, so that you can give yourself like a, a level playing field for the rest of your workflow. So before we get into the tutorial, if you want to download, speaking of workflow, if you want to download our six stage Photoshop workflow cheat sheet PDF so that you can see the six stages that I run every one of my images through. Uh, from start to finish to uh, get consistent results every time then just click the link below this video now otherwise let's get started with the tutorial so I've got a shot on the screen at the moment and I've already loaded it in from Lightroom so the reason I'm not just going to use Lightroom straight away or Camera Raw um, to, to kind of boost the dark areas is uh, you know because there are some sliders that you can use to boost the shadows and whatnot um, is because I like to do this kind of thing selectively um, and using layer masks to brush the, uh, you know, the the parts that we're adjusting into the image and I'll show you why in just a minute. So the, yeah, the first thing that we need to do in this process is create a duplicate of our background. So I'm just going to drag the, uh, the background layer down onto the new layer icon and that's going to create the copy. And now so that I can run filters on this layer and to be able to update those filter settings after I've applied them we need to convert this to a smart object so I'm going to click filter and convert, uh, convert for smart filters that will just take a second to process and now that's done I can go back up to filter and use the camera raw filter so this is going to look very familiar if you're uh, if you usually use Camera Raw and also if you use Lightroom because this is basically the uh, same controls as what you get in the Lightroom Develop module. So the reason I like doing it this way is because the exposure slider is actually really good and you know it's kind of yeah you know, I, I just like the the way that it applies the uh, the brightness evenly uh, across the image compared to other other tools that you can use to brighten an image. Uh, so I'm just going to slide the uh, slider up until this sort of dark area in the foreground becomes, you know, just by eye, you know, until it becomes, um, you know, bright enough <laughs> for want of a better word. So probably around about two and a half stops of exposure there. Yeah, it might be tempting to uh, to adjust some highlights and whites here just to kind of recover that overexposed sky, but. You know, if you start doing this too much, then it can make your image start to look a bit too HDR-ish. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll tend to avoid those if I can. So I'll just reset the highlights and the whites there uh, because we're going to um, be using layer masks to apply this brighter foreground to the image. So at the moment, all I've done is just increase the exposure. Now. The problem with brightening a really dark image like this, depending on your camera and its sensor, is that you're going to get a lot of noise down uh, in these darkest areas. So the way that you can fix this is in the uh, detail tab here and you can apply luminance noise reduction and the, in the uh, darkest blacks here I've also got some color noise. However, if I start to apply that uh, into into the image then you'll notice that I do lose a lot of detail in these areas over here that haven't really got much noise so I'm going to leave that off for now and I'm going to apply this change uh, just with only the exposure applied so I'll click OK and now we can see we've got this background copy with the camera raw filter applied and I'll just toggle that off and on so you can see what that looks like compared to the original background. Now, what we can do to create a uh, another layer which is going to deal with that noise is just duplicate this background copy. 
So I'm going to click and drag that down to the new layer icon. And I'll open up the, uh, the smart filters uh, for this layer. And because this is a smart object now, I can double click on the camera raw filter here and it will reopen the camera raw filter with the same settings applied and I can change those if I need to. So what I'm going to look at now is over here in the darkest shadows and I'm just going to apply some noise reduction. So I'll slide the luminance slider up probably between 20 and 30. When you go much further than that, you do start to lose a bit too much detail and sharpness. So it becomes a balancing act really. Um, and also some color noise that I'll uh, just, I think you can get away with a lot more color noise reduction without losing detail. But I think for this image, we're going to stick with uh, 30 and 30, but you'll want to uh, just you know, apply this depending on the shot that you're working on. And I'll just click OK to save that now. And here now we've got background to uh, background copy two, which has got the noise reduction applied across the whole image. But we don't want that. So we need to add a layer mask to first of all mask this layer out. So I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon. It's going to add a white layer mask. So I just need to click on that and click command or control I on the keyboard to invert the mask, turn it black and uh, hide this layer. And now I'm going to select the brush tool with the white foreground. And I can be quite uh, aggressive on the opacity of the brush here. So I'll just stick it on 100. Um, for now, and I'm just going to start brushing basically what I'm doing here, brushing into the layer mask to reveal the noise reduction layer. And I can do that just in these darkest blacks, which have got most of the noise. So, you know, you will notice that, you know, when you're applying this yourself, you'll see a lot of the detail kind of disappear. Um, if you've been quite uh, heavy on the, on the luminance noise reduction slider, but like I said a minute ago, that's the that's the sort of the payoff really, um, or that's yeah that's the sacrifice you have to make basically balancing between detail and noise. Um, but the good thing about doing it this way with the separate layer and masking it in is that you only have to be concerned about that in those darkest shadows. So now that we've got these two layers, which basically do the same thing apart from this second one as the noise reduction applied. In order to blend this in with the original background, because we need to get this sky back into the image, uh, we can apply a layer mask that is going to basically mask out this overexposed sky in, uh, in both of these layers at once. And to do that, we need to highlight or select both of these layers. So I'm going to click on the top one and then shift click on the second one. And then I'm going to click on this uh, create new group icon. And because I've got those two layers selected, it's going to automatically put those layers into the group. And now if I open this uh, group and close it, we can see the two layers in there. Now, you know, normally um, this would be a good idea for sort of keeping your layers panel organized, but it also has the added benefit of being able to apply a layer mask directly to the group. So anything I do in this mask now is going to mask out all of the layers that are in that group. So what we can do with that now is start masking with a black brush this time into the sky. And that's going to hide this brighter group of layers and start to bring through the background layer, which has that darker sky with the color and the detail. So depending on the shot, the level of accuracy that you'll uh, want to use when um, you know, when brushing into the layer mask is going to differ. Um, for this one here, we've got quite a um, you know, quite a straight line here, which the uh, quick selection tool is actually probably going to do a quite a good job of selecting that nice and accurately. Uh, depending on your shot, you might want to use luminosity masking to make a really accurate selection of your sky. Um, but for now, I can just use this tool, the quick selection tool. So I'll just start drawing into the sky and you can see there as soon as I do that, it's kind of picked up um, 
you know the edge of the mountain here and it goes around and you know it's created that selection for me and now I have that selection active what I can do is go back to my brush tool with the black brush I'll probably lower the opacity this time down to 30 or 40 let's split the difference call it 35 34 and uh, yeah then I can just start brushing into the sky to bring through that darker sky from the bottom layer and because I've got this selection active at the time while I'm doing these brush strokes it's going to mean that I'm not yeah you know, anything that I do um, with the brush that kind of goes over the lines it's not going to uh, you know, it's not going to brush into those areas so it's restricting the brush strokes to within the selection so let me just do this a little bit more bring that through so we're starting to get close to the original darkness uh, you know the original sky and i'll probably leave it there now let me deselect the selection so command or control d and we can see now it does look a little bit funny and that's because the sky has actually been darkened or well actually it's the other way around we've we've brightened the foreground more than we should have in comparison to the sky so the sky um, so the foreground is actually looking brighter than it should and it just looks a bit off and it's kind of got a bit of that HDR look to it so we've got a couple of options that we could uh, use for blending these in together now the um, you know we could either brighten the sky a little bit more or we can just go ahead and uh, take this group that we created with those brightening layers and just reduce the opacity of this whole group as well. So let's just move that down a bit and we can see the, uh, the whole foreground there is just getting a little bit darker as I move this opacity gradually. And so it's just, you know, there's no scientific method for this. Uh, you know, it's just basically going to be... Uh, moving it until it looks okay. But the idea here is just to create a balance now between the foreground and the sky. But if you decide that, you know, the, the foreground is exactly as bright as you want it, and you don't want to have to darken it to blend it in with the uh, with the darker sky, then what you can do is just reduce the, uh, the opacity or the density of the layer mask that you've just created. So rather than having to go back and rebrush over here with a white brush to sort of bring it back through, what you can do is click on the layer mask and then open the properties panel and you can actually just reduce the density here of the layer mask and as I do that now you can see that is brightening the sky back up and again it's just a case of using this slider here to to blend the two elements in the foreground and the sky until uh, you know until it looks good so yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Now, once I've got the image to this stage, I would then go on and process it through the rest of my workflow. Um, I won't do that in this tutorial now because this was just to show you the, the best way to actually brighten that underexposed image. Um, if you do want to continue on and find out the uh, you know the remaining stages of my six stage workflow, then you can do that just by clicking the link below this video now and you can download the PDF that lays it all out for you and gives you all the steps and you know each stage and what it means and how you can use it to uh, to create a solid consistent workflow for yourself so okay i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching